Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of John the Comic Guy. Today I want to talk about some uh, comic story arcs that just really resonated with me. I can't really say if they're my favorites of all times, but they're among my favorites. And you know, maybe this will be ongoing. When we get a couple of story arcs that are just fantastic, let's talk about them. Uh, but these I think will, will uh, they won't surprise you, but what I'm not going to talk about are like the two big ones that I think that I read, I thought they were great. The Dark Knight Returns, absolutely fantastic. Loved it. Um, I also enjoyed The Watchmen. Um, but I'm not going to talk about these. Uh, those two in particular uh, were fantastic. Uh, but I wanted to talk about some other ones that resonated because it was my age when I read them or it was just so surprising. You know, when they always, just like when you watch a TV show and the storyline has a twist, it just makes you sit back and go, hmm, that was really good. So, those are the ones that I want to talk about today. And before I do that, I also want to thank um, Greg Waite, 3553. Greg asked a question on, uh, um, uh, uh, posted a question, and I thought it was really great. And he asked, what do, you, what do I think about controversial stories, characters and their beliefs, things like that? So it really did make me uh, think a lot of the story arcs. I mean, I think uh, even Marvel, they're changing some of the characters to uh, to girls, and, and that's all fine. But I really believe if the story ends up becoming organic, if it changes organically, and what I mean by that is if it's natural. If there's a natural progression of the story and things change, if for example, Peter Parker's daughter became Spider Woman instead of and, and took over the mantle. That and but it led up to it. It wasn't just a two issue story arc that just changed things. Then I feel, yeah, this is a nat this is a natural progression of the story. If it's artificially changed just to be, I guess they would call it being woke, then I think while it's perfectly fine for the character, I just don't tend to think that's as believable. And hey, anybody want to read it, that's all fine. I don't judge. But for me, I I tend to prefer things that just happen organically or naturally, and they don't, they're not forced. Um, that's how I like it. Controversy, uh, hey, if you have controversy in, 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 in comics, that's all great. If, it, if it's a reflection of the times, I think it's good. Just don't force it. If it's a natural part of the story and a writer wants to make his word or make his story known, I'm all good with that. But again, if you force it just to kind of say, hey, we need to represent this sector of people and let's just write a story to, to reflect that, I think it's forced. And I personally don't pick up things like that. Again, that's me, right? I want to keep it positive. So that's just me. But that being said, Greg, wait. 3553, thank you so much for your question. If you guys have questions and, and you want to put feedback, if I think it really is thought-provoking, it makes my brain go, hey, I got to include this, I'll do that. So let's talk about some of the impactful stories in my life. The first, I have a feeling most people who read this feel the same way. It is The Amazing Spider-Man number 121, The Death of Gwen Stacy. In particular, with that death, I thought, and, 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 and I actually did not pick issue 121 up off the newsstand. So I read it way after the fact. It was probably 1977. Uh, what was it? It, was, it came out in 73. So this was written by Jerry Conway. And what I thought was so, so amazing, really, if you forget the pun, is... When, in the scene where Peter Parker or Spider-Man tried to catch Gwen and he got the webbing around her foot, for a second you thought, wow, he might be able to save her, right? This is a comic book. He's going to save her. And then you see when it, the, the line just tugged her and it made her neck snap. At that point, you're like, whoa, right? Again, I was a kid, so at that point in, in, uh, in 76, I was 11 years old. Uh, that's or 77 I was 12 so I was pretty young and impressionable and when I saw that was the first time really in a comic book that I experienced a, a death of a significant character um, so that kind of made me really take a step back and say whoa that was deep so Jerry Conway's storyline I think that was great and again the artist in this was uh, John Rom 
um, John Romita and Gil, uh, John Romita and Gil Kane, um, by drawing that and, and putting that snap in there. Um, I also heard, and, and I don't have any of the reprints of this, but I heard um, in reprinted issues that they removed that snap. So I, guess, so I guess that was a little heavy, right? I, I, if they're removing the snap, that was the part that really took me back, that made sure I knew that girl is gone. So uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 122. Uh, uh, 121. I guess I just gave a preview for the next one. I thought... The follow-on issue, again, same creative team, that was phenomenal. So, again, I liked uh, I liked how I kind of was in a little bit of shock after 121. 120, 122, you knew some bad stuff was going to go down. And when uh, Green Goblin's uh, glider ended out killing him, right? Spider-Man, his spider sense uh, knew something was coming at him, and he moved that other way. And then it killed Green Goblin, and it just, uh, I think the word was chunk. It went into his chest. <laughs> Those were two deep issues, 121 and 122. These are like the natural the natural two uh, pair of comics that death after death. But again, when I, when I read this in 76 or 77, and I saw Green Goblin die the way he did, uh, not that he didn't deserve it. But wow, they really made it pretty graphic. And again, in, in the 70s, that was that was pretty heavy. So Spider-Man number 122, another great uh, comic that just, it did impact me. As a kid, watching Green Goblin die, wow. I actually did mention this in a previous episode, but another book that I really, really enjoyed, and I thought it was... Amazing how how it was portrayed. Thor number three thirty seven. Walt Simonson, you know Walt is such a talented guy. He uh, and I think you all know this, right? I love Walt Simonson. I got this. This is a signed copy that I got at the Omni Center in eighty four. I think it was Creation eighty four. But he not only wrote, but he drew these books. And what a so he wrote a classic and he drew a classic. The guy is a double threat. I love it. So I always thought that one scene when Beta Ray Bill grabbed the, the, the cane and he tapped, they whacked the cane, and then you next see him with Thor's hammer. Come on, how sick is that? You know, so when I saw that, it's like, holy crow, this alien is now wielding Thor's hammer. You know, it was big from the cover, right? You knew what was shaking things up, but wow. Magnifique, I loved it. So I, I saw that, and I have to put this down. So for me, why is that so impressionable? I don't know. I think the whole combination, I loved I, I loved the cover. That was one of the most eye-catching covers, and I guess it would still be considered such a classic cover that was, uh, you know, done in a, home, uh, a homage cover many, many times. But it's a beautiful cover. You knew it was something was going to be shaken up, and you knew Beta Ray was going to get the hammer. It's just reading it, seeing it on the pages, you just knew it was crazy. It was great. So... Again, this was one of my favorite possessions in comics. It's signed by Walt, but even more importantly, when, if for the discussion that we're having today, the, the, the stories that have a real impact on me, that was big. Walt Simonson. The next, you know, uh, the 80s were just such an amazing time for comics. I, I, I'm not one of those guys to say, oh, in the old days, it was just better. But I gotta say, these stories just are just so unbelievable. I mentioned The Dark Knight Returns, right? Frank Miller. I, I'm obviously a huge Frank Miller fan. Who isn't? Frank is great. This story, Daredevil, number 181. Now, I, I know you guys are probably thinking, oh my god, the death of Electra, that's sick, right? Yeah, that that is sick. So this is a double banger for me. The reason, obviously, the death of Electra is big. But what I think impacted me the most are the last few panels of the comic. So at that point, Daredevil already let go and Bullseye fell. 
And now you know Bullseye is in the hospital, right? You know Bullseye is in the hospital with basically every bone in his busted body broken. And you're thinking, good for you, Matt. Good for you, Daredevil. And, and, and it's like, he killed Electra, and now you got him. But then you're reading what he's thinking, right? He's not talking. He's thinking. And he's thinking things like, I hate you. Yeah, and my hate's going to grow. And not only is my hate going to grow, but I'm going to rebuild my body piece by piece, and I'm going to come back. I don't know. I thought that was the creepiest, sickage, sickest few panels that I read. But then I'm, And I'm reading this, and it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bullseye's coming back. I don't know when he's coming back, but he's coming back. And, of course, he does, right? He does, and he's, he's better than ever. But when you guys read that, and, and by the way, any of these books, if you don't have these books or you haven't read a reprint of these books, at this point, I, I'm saying, I don't even, if you don't own them, find a way to read them because these are some of the most amazing comic book stories. When you read these, you're realizing, wow, this sequential art form is fantastic. It, it, it almost gave me goosebumps thinking about how sick Bullseye is. It's just crazy. So check it out. If you don't have it, you want to read the... Uh, again, you're going to see the death of Electra. That's horrible, right? But then you're going to see Bullseye broken up and what he's thinking. I think that is even more impactful. So this is a double threat comic. 181 of Daredevil. That's a wow. That's a wow. All right, now before I show a couple of the last two books, let me just give a shout out and thank for Mark our, uh, thanks to Mark, our sponsor at ComicSkin.com. Uh, ComicSkin has graciously offered to give us 5% off to all of our subscriber. Um, this, again, is my favorite vessel to do long-term comic preservation myself. I don't have to send it out. It is the same dimensions, basically, give or take a couple of microns, right? It's just, it, it, it's basically the same size of a slab, whether you get, you like CBCS or you like CGC. It's great. It, you, know, you could take your book out, you could read it, and then you put it back in. I make my own custom labels, as you all know, and I think my custom labels are crazy nice. So you could be, you could exercise your uh, artistic skills. Uh, you just have to, in the, in the, uh, uh, section where you check out, you have to put John the Comic Guy 5, and you'll get your 5% off. And this is good for the singles, the 5 packs, and the 10 packs. Don't try to get other stuff because, again, it's just really only good for your comic skin itself. But you, you, could, you could apply the 5% on your singles, your 5 packs, and your 10 packs. Check them out. If you do, reach out to me. Let me know that you did so and show me your labels. Let's compare. Let's compete. Let's compare. All right. And Matt, uh, Mark, thank you so much for your 5% off. Much appreciated, Mark. Comicskin.com. Okay. Now, this is really my second to last one, but it's the last book that in the 80s made a huge imp impact on me. Again. It's a Frank Miller book, Daredevil 189. What was so impactful about this is, again, we all know Daredevil's this great superhero. He's blind. He has all these heightened senses. And then he meets his trainer, you know, Stick. And Stick has his team of superheroes that we never met before, right? Shap, Stone, and Claw. And in this particular case... You see, uh, I think it was, uh, um, I think it was Stone. Stone, you know, they, they hear the people from the hand coming. And the people from the hand are, are, are trying to kill them. And they say, okay, in that hallway, in the hallway. And then Shaft shoots some arrows, and you see a couple of people from the hand die. And, and all along, you see Daredevil saying, whoa, how did you guys hear it? I didn't hear it. And I'm a superhero. And I love it. And then they refer to him. They look and they go, hmm, amateurs. I love that. You know, uh, that is such amazing storytelling 
that you have a superhero that we have now 189 issues of, and he's being referred to as an amateur. God, I love that. It, it just, that just flip things around for me. That just, uh, again, when you have, when you have a book that just makes you really think and say, hmm, I did not expect that. How, how great does storytelling get when it does that? So Frank Miller, beautiful job. I, I really enjoyed that. And, um, and the art from here is uh, done by uh, Frank, Frank Miller and, and Klaus Janssen. So uh, really great, really great story. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to give a story that I'm going to call it an honorable mention. It, it 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 it's newer. So it it did impact me. It impacted me like those other books did. But it's newer. This is from 2007. Uh, my buddies who are watching, I know we've spoken about this this story arc in my garage, right? It's the uh, uh, Ryan and in, in fact Ryan, I remember I think either calling you or texting you saying, "God, Dude, did you read this? And so Ryan, who's I, I would say the world's biggest Spider-Man fan that I know of, he probably likes Spider-Man more than me. Um, this is the Back in Black storyline. So this is Amazing Spider-Man five five forty two. The run was from five thirty nine to five forty three, but Amazing Spider-Man five forty two in particular. Um, it, I don't want to get in too much. If you guys haven't read it, and I would encourage you to read it, but. For a long story short is Aunt May got shot accidentally. The bullet was meant for Peter, right? And guess who uh, Guess who hired the gunman? You see him right here, Kingpin. So once Peter Parker, once Spider-Man figures this out, he, don't, he, he puts back on the black uniform. And, and you guys probably know, I refer to these as uniforms, not costumes. Why? I don't know. It's the same reason I collect action figures, not dollies, right? I, I, but anyway, so I, I use the word action figure, not dolls, and uniforms, not costume. That's John Lies OCD. But when he gets into the prison and he faces Kingpin, boy, he slaps him around. And, uh, you know, he grabs, he grabs him by the chest and you think, yeah, 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 yeah. And when you're in a fight, you always grab him by the, you know, by the, sh the shirt. Yeah, Peter didn't grab him by the shirt. He, gra he grabbed him by the skin. If you haven't read the Back in Black storyline, I would say get it. For a 2000s book, this, and again, at this point, I'm getting, I'm, I'm becoming an old man, right? I'm, I'm reading this, and I went, whoa, that's crazy. So, and, and let me give the shout out. The, the, the writer was uh, Michael Straczynski. Really good. And the art's great, too. I, I thought uh, Ron Garney and Bill Reinhold, they did, did, did a nice job uh, with the art. So uh, this was, I think, a storyline that for me was almost the, the full package. It was really great. Good art, good storyline, just really a delight to read. So that is it for my... Uh, my discussion on my some of my favorite storylines. I do have to repeat this. These are not the best that I've ever read of all times, but I thought they were just so relevant to kind of kick off this discussion of what stories were really relevant in my comic collecting world. And I'm sure I'm going to think of more. Um, and I want to discuss more. Sound off in the comment section. Which storylines did you really love? Again, if you say it's The Dark Knight and Watchmen, no worries. I, I love those books too, but I wanted to kind of give it a slightly different twist that, that people, right? How many, how many videos are out there talking about Dark Knight? How many videos are out there talking about Watchmen? I wanted to be a little different, um, but let me know what your, your favorite story arcs are, and I might be, uh, I might be a fan of those too, and we'll do the next, uh, next version of this video uh, to discuss that. One last time, I want to give a shout out to Greg Waite. 3553. When I saw your posting, I thought of, I, I already had this in mind, but I wanted to, it was just so apropos to kind of tie your comment in with this. So I really appreciate you giving such a mindful question. And I hope a lot of you guys decide you want to add some uh, uh, feedback and, and uh, add some questions, put some stuff in the comment section and I will reply. I'll try to reply to them all and I'll try to include the ones that I think that really might, might boost the video. So everybody, Thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of content and you're enjoying this, 
please hit the subscribe button and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.